Hello and welcome to another fantastic tutorial. My name is Kostov Chatterjee and today I'll show you a unique technique to make highly detailed pine trees that just look awesome. I achieved some great results with this method even in a small scale like N scale. It's neither hard nor very time consuming so you should find this video interesting. Today I'll be making red pine trees. I started with some basic research in Google to find the shape, size and bark color. For the main trunk of the tree, I'm going to use dry twigs that I found in my aunt's garden waste. I searched for straight twigs and fortunately found quite a few that are reddish brown in color, making my job easier to make red pine trees. Since I'll be making end scale trees, I cut off 5 inches and 4 inches long sections from the top of two twigs. The natural taper towards the end also eliminated any need for reshaping the main trunk. Revel model saw made the job easier to make a clean cut. To make it easier to work with the trees, I had to put a handle on each of the trees. I took a two-ended toothpick and cut it in the middle. Then I drilled a hole at the bottom of each trunk. It is possible to use the pin vise, but given I'll have to drill quite a few tiny holes in this project, I simply attached the drill bit to my Dremel rotary tool, making the job much easier. Once the holes are drilled at the bottom, I took a little bit of wood glue on the tip of the toothpick and pushed it down the hole to make a permanent handle come attaching pin. Now that the preliminaries are done, it is time to start the main event. The next step is to attach the branches. I took a few dry twigs of plants that are locally available here in India. However, any small twig of any dried plant should work. The idea is to create the basic branch structure, so there is no need to be super specific. Studying the branch structure of the real trees helped me deciding the right shape and size of the pieces that I needed. I took my Dremel and started drilling holes in the main trunk where I wanted to attach the branches. Notice that the existing branch attachment positions were a natural choice. Also see that towards the top, the holes are made downwards so that the branches face upward when attached. Next I took a little bit of wood glue and mixed all the fine wood dust that generated from all the sawing and drilling with the glue. Wood dust and glue cures very strong and dries much faster than just glue. Then it's just a matter of dipping one end of the small twigs and push it in the holes that I just drilled, always keeping in mind the final shape that I wanted to achieve. I did need some extra branches after attaching the first set, but it was just a matter of drilling a few more holes and fixing the small twigs. Attaching the main branches is a progressive process and some final tweaking was required when I had most of the branches attached. Trimming the extra long branches and twisting them in proper orientation when the glue is still not set was required to achieve the conical shape. Before proceeding further, it is time to complete painting the trunk. To hide all the drill marks, I just took a reddish brown matte enamel paint and painted the branch attachments. Red pine trunk is bright reddish brown on top, however, the bottom of the trunk is grey. Often underneath the grey bark, the red shows through. To achieve this effect, I took unbleached titanium and some grey acrylic paint, mixed it and dry brushed the lower portion of the trunk. For the twigs, I use semi-dried asparagus for needles. I originally sourced this batch from my mother's garden to do a traditional glycerine-based preservation, but I couldn't start that process soon enough, so these just turned out to be semi-dried, unpreserved needles. Useless? Not quite. I headed to my balcony, took brown spray paint, and just sprayed the needles thoroughly. It's never as effective as glycerine-based preservation, but given spray paints have pretty strong addition properties, it is sufficient for my purpose, especially since I'll be using these as twigs of the model tree and not as pine needles. Once the paint dried, I'd cut some small pieces of asparagus fern stems. I was not particular about any specific shape at this point, just something that matched the general shape of the tree that I was building. 
To attach the asparagus twigs to the branches, I used tacky glue. I put the glue directly on the branches where I wanted to attach the twigs and waited for one or two minutes till it turns tacky. The small asparagus twigs are pretty light, so a gentle press with a pair of tweezers was enough to set them in place. I often attach two or more pieces of asparagus twigs in one blob of glue. The white glue looks very odd at the beginning, but the glue dries absolutely clear. Woodland Scenic's Hobby Tack is a better option if you have it, but this does the job pretty well too. The process generated a bit of loose needles, discarded twigs, and small little branches, and I stored all of them in a container since they make excellent ground cover for the right scene. After all the asparagus twigs were attached, this was the final result. Notice that for the smaller tree, I did not bother making separate branches. I attached the asparagus stems and twigs directly to the trunk, giving it a much denser, younger look. Now for the big transformation, the needles. For needles of these trees, I use static grass. Red pine needles are 3 to 8 inches long, and since I'm modeling in end scale, 1 mm static grass fit the bill in terms of scale. I'd be using three shades of 1 mm static grass from Pico, autumn, spring, and winter, showing all stages of leaves in the tree. For HO scale, 2 or 3 mm static grass should work fine. Any static grass applicator should work, but given the precise nature of the job, I decided to use Pico Precision Applicator. It's quite small and it makes it very easy to do targeted application that is crucial for the success of these trees. Next, I took two portions of autumn and one portion each of spring and winter colors of Pico static grass in a container. I filled a small cup of the applicator with the mix and turned the machine on. For the larger tree, I wanted more control, so I took a soft bristle brush and applied the scenic glue on the asparagus twigs, avoiding the main branches and the trunk. Here, I'm using the sample glue provided in the Pico Precision Applicator package, which I presume is the same as any scenic glue, that is 3 to 1 diluted glue with a dash of isopropyl alcohol. To apply the static grass, I held a negative pole of the applicator right below the branches where I wanted the grass to fall. And then I started shaking the applicator gently. The grass started sticking to all the twigs and little branches where the glue was applied. After the first round, I shook the excess back into the container to be used in the second iteration. I gradually worked my way up and applied the mix of static grass on the whole tree. Now while you enjoy the time lapse, I'd like to thank all my supporters. The channel crossed 500 subscribers mark in January and that made me really happy. A special thanks to Vinny for multiple callouts on his channel earlier. His weekly live shows are fun and you should check it out. I'd also like to thank Anthony for all the interaction and comments. His tutorials are great and you should find his channel very interesting. Link in the description below for both channels. After every major step, I shook the excess in the container to be reused in the next cycle. Finally, I took a hard bristle brush and brushed any remaining static grass from the trunk and main branches. For the smaller tree, I took a little different approach. First of all, I took summer as the main color mixed with the leftover of the previous tree. Second, I decided to take a faster route by using hairspray instead of scenic glue. I carefully sprayed on the side of the tree to ensure that the glue falls on the twigs and not on the main trunk. This made sure that the flyaway static grass will not get glued in places where I didn't want them. The rest of the process remains the same. I gradually fill the whole tree with static grass to simulate pine needles. I occasionally sprayed the hairspray to ensure the needles are sticking properly and carried on to the next round of static grass application. Now given that hairspray doesn't give you a lot of control, there were some areas in this tree where the static grass created a thick coat of grass and it resembled more of a small patch of grass in the air rather than pine needles on a tree. 
So before everything fully cured, I took a hard bristle brush and removed some grass from these set of branches to fix the problem. Finally, let me present you two excellent pine trees. These are made in N scale and look fabulous for the scale, but you can use the same methods for HL scale trees as well and achieve similar results. All you need to do is to scale everything up to almost 87. So will you be interested to try this method to make your pine trees? Out of many other ways to make these type of trees, how would you rate this variation considering the end result? Let me know in the comments below. That is it for today. Happy modeling and see you around. Bye.